Hey everybody! Okay, so right now I'm at the observatory, which is this really old building that has a big telescope inside of it. So if you go there at night, you can look at the stars. I went there last summer, but I accidentally went on a night when it was super cloudy, so I couldn't see the stars, so that wasn't the smartest choice. <laughs> But maybe if you come here one day, you'll get to come to the observatory and see for yourself. So I thought this, was a, this would be a good place to keep on reading our book together. So let's get started. Chapter nine. How would we do that? Asked Penny. Yes, how would you? Repeated the mermaids. Joshua looked at them all. I don't know, he admitted, but we must try. It's not really even a choice. Penny, don't you agree? Penny thought for a second. Yes, I agree, Joshua. Something really must be done, or else the ocean will be done for. But do you know what to do? You could ask Vanessa, said the mermaid. She's the wisest mermaid in the sea. Do you know about her? Penny asked Joshua. He shook his head. Where would we find her? He asked the mermaid. Oh, she lives near here. About, say, one mile underwater? Joshua shook his head. We can't breathe underwater. Oh, you can. And as for her, she said, gesturing to Penny, we can use our magic to help her. I can breathe underwater? Joshua shouted, unbelieving. How is that possible? I don't know, but mermaids can always tell. Here, try it. Joshua looked down at the water. I can't do it. Not with that attitude. Be a sport. Joshua took a deep breath and jumped off the boat. Joshua! shouted Penny as she watched him jump off. Joshua landed in the cold water. He didn't know what to do. Finally, he tried taking a breath. It worked! Joshua could breathe underwater. How am I able to do this? He asked the mermaids when he surfaced. I don't know. You were just born that way, I suppose. Now, for the girl, said the mermaid, surveying Penny. I think we could use this song. Are we ready, sisters? They nodded, and they began to sing. Seek no further, journey not, for what millions have sought is within your power now, underwater, deep and low. With that, Penny felt an odd sort of feeling, like she was taking a deep breath of fresh air. She suddenly knew that she could breathe underwater. Without hesitation, she dove into the waves. At first, like Joshua, she didn't know what to do. She finally took one breath, and yes, she breathed underwater. I'm like a mermaid, she laughed as she swam in the waves. The mermaid smiled. It's wonderful, isn't it? And now you can go and meet Vanessa. Oh, yes, said Joshua, for in the excitement of finding out that he could breathe underwater, he had forgotten all about the quest. We'll take you there, said the mermaid, and while we're at it, we'll be able to show you the wonders of the sea like you've never seen before. Chapter 10 And so they all dove underwater. Once under, Joshua and Penny couldn't believe they had never seen this watery world before. They could see the shining waves and the glittering fish, dolphins off in the distance, and pure white sand to the bottom of it all. So, mermaids can make someone able to breathe underwater? Penny asked the mermaids. Why, yes, it's part of our magic, you see. Mermaids can give the ability to anyone they wish. Penny thought about that. Do you suppose that's why Joshua can do it? Oh no, he was born that way. But how on earth is that possible? Dogs can't breathe underwater any more than humans can. The mermaid shook her head. I don't know, but Vanessa will. You'll have, you can ask her. Penny was quiet the rest of the way. She had a lot to think about. Only a few weeks ago, she had never known that any of this existed. And now here she was, caught in the middle of it all. Here we are, sang out the mermaids as they approached the undersea cave. Penny gasped. It, it was the most beautiful cave you could ever imagine. It looked like it was made out of pure, sparkling crystal and covered in every sort of jewel you could imagine. The sun reflected off it, making it look as if it were shining bright. Joshua and Penny were dazzled by it. Is, is that cave made of crystal? Penny asked Joshua. Looks quite a lot like it, answered Joshua as the mermaid swam in. Well, what are you waiting for? They asked. Follow us. So they all swam into the cave. Penny and Joshua couldn't take their eyes off the cave walls. They were so magnificent. They were lined with pearls, jade, and sparkling gems. No palace that the land had to offer could ever appear so beautiful. Vanessa, are you here? called the mermaids. You may enter, called a voice. She said we may enter, whispered the mermaids. Joshua, Penny, and the mermaids entered into an inner chamber. 
There, sitting on a throne carved out of pure sapphire and lined with emeralds, sat Vanessa. Vanessa was very beautiful. She had long hair that was blue and green, which matched both the ocean and the throne on which she sat. Her fin was of the same colors as was her dress. Her eyes were blue-green as well, and they looked kind, yet also firm and wise. She carried a scepter made out of jade with sapphires throughout. All in all, she looked very much like the ocean itself. What is this? she asked, noticing Joshua and Penny. A dog and a, hu and a human breathe the water? The mermaids explained. We gave the ability to the girl, but the dog was born with it. Is that so? said Vanessa, but it did not look as if she was really asking the question. She looked at Joshua with her blue-green eyes. Swim forth, she bade him. Joshua did so. What is your name? she asked. Joshua was nervous, but he knew he must be brave. I am Joshua. Vanessa nodded her head. Quite so. And who are you? she asked Penny. I am called Penny, ma'am, she said nervously. I see. What do you wish to know? Joshua spoke up. We wish to know how we can rescue the sea orb. It was stolen from the caves of the sea wolf, and Captain Killian is intending to use it when the moon is full and the tide is high. I see, said the mermaid. Well, then, if you really wish to know, you must destroy the sea urchin. How can we? That will be impossible. Nothing is impossible. But how? I will give you a clue, Joshua. Know that everything, living or not, has one weak point in themselves. You do, and so does she, she said, gushing to Penny. And even I possess a weak point. But how can I find it? You must first discover it in yourself. Then the answer will be clear. Vanessa turned to them all. You are dismissed. Chapter 11 Joshua was a bit disappointed. He didn't know any more now than when he had first come to see Vanessa, and now he had to destroy the sea urchin without any clue as to how to do it. He also realized that he had a weak point. Where was it? He would have to examine himself when they got back to the ship. Thank you ever so much for helping, said Penny to the mermaids. You're quite welcome. It was our pleasure. If you ever need any help, know that Pearl, Jade, and Aqua will gladly be of service. Those are lovely names. I hope we meet again. Take care, called the mermaids as they swam away, and good luck. Joshua and Penny swam back to the boat. What do we do now, asked Penny. We find the sea urchin. And what then? Joshua sighed. I still don't know. Vanessa didn't make it clear. Penny nodded. Joshua turned his ship toward the setting sun. As he did so, he remembered what Vanessa had said about his weak point. He examined himself. Now where could it be? Was it in his tail? No, he had a good strong tail. He wagged it once or twice, just to be sure. Was it one of his legs or paws? No, they were all in good condition. What could it be? Penny, do I really have a weak point? He asked. I suppose we all do, Joshua. I know mine, she answered. You do? Yes. Could you tell me? Penny hesitated, then laughed. I suppose I may as well. It may help you find yours. What is it? Well, it's quite silly, I suppose, but I'm... I'm afraid of... Yes? I'm afraid of storms. Storms? Yes, like thunderstorms. All the thunder and lightning frightens me so. Joshua couldn't believe it. So why did you want to come to sea? You know it storms often out here. Yes, but I thought it would be better to face my fear. What better place to do it than with a good friend? I suppose you're right, said Joshua, wondering what friend she was talking about. Suddenly he realized too. Penny was talking about him. Now as I have mentioned before, Joshua had never had a friend before, and he did not know what to think about it. Should he be friends with Penny? She was a human after all, and humans could not be trusted. That was a long-standing rule with Joshua. How could he possibly befriend a human? She shared a species with the hated Captain Killian. Still, Joshua had a lot to think about.